I am so excited. We have accepted a challenge. So Goodwill and DecoArt have teamed up together and they have created a Create Opportunity Challenge at Goodwill and they are using the brand new Deco Earth paints from DecoArt. So I am going to transform this little gem that I found at Goodwill and we are going to make it into a treasure. I'm Patty with Studio R12 Stencils, and I am going to take you on this journey today, this Goodwill Challenge, and introduce Deco Earth Paints to you. This is made from 70% recycled house paint, so I'm excited about that. You go from waste to wonder, and it's just a really magic product. There are 29 paints in the line, and they're super creamy, and they have really good coverage. So I'll be using them today almost exclusively, except for maybe some accent things and stuff. Um, and then I'm gonna show you how to reclaim a project or an item from Goodwill and make it into a brand new item. So we're gonna start there with prep. Okay, so I have a wood item here today, and it is fairly rough. So I'm gonna start with the obvious um, prep. So I've got my 60 grit sandpaper. It's really, really, really rough. And I don't wanna gouge this wood, but I wanna rough it, it, rough it up. All right, so when you get done sanding, you wanna go ahead and you wanna wipe off all of your sanding dust so that you get good adhesion for your mediums. When you are getting ready to prime or prep your surface for painting or repainting, there's a couple of options that you have for you. You need to understand what you're painting on and whether the paint is water-based or not. Um, this doesn't seem like an oil-based product, so I'm going with the assumption that this is water-based. You can use DecoArt's um, paint adhesion medium, or you could use multi-purpose sealer, or if you have an ornate product that you are a candlestick or something like that that you're trying to seal, you could give it a spray with the Krylon Matte Finish 1311. Um, this is an awesome product too. So those are a couple ways that you can prepare. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the multi-purpose sealer, and we'll get a foam brush, and then we're just going to give it a base all the way around so that we know that we have something between this layer of paint and the next layer of paint. So that's what the sealer is for. All right, so my transformation for this little tote is going to be a garden truck. So we are going to make some garden markers to go with our garden truck. And so I'm gonna get those based while I'm waiting for my, um, my paint, my sealer to, to dry. I'm going to use, uh-oh, glasses. This is moss green. Oh, that's pretty color. Okay, we're gonna paint two stir sticks from the paint store in the moss green. Look at that coverage, isn't that fantastic? I don't think I'm gonna need a second coat. I don't think I've said those words in a long time. Okay, then we'll switch gears and we'll go into, I've got a coral color here, and I think the coral might need to be toned down just a teeny bit, and this coral color is called orange. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of white and tone that down just a touch. All right, we're gonna make two of the paint sticks in my mix of the white with the orange. Also excellent coverage. Okay, and we're gonna go into our third color, which is gonna be in our yellow family. And this is called, guess, yellow. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing with that. We're going to tone it down with our white paint. I'm gonna go about 50%. I don't want glaring yellow paint. That's 
really, really excellent coverage. That's amazing. Good job, DecoArt. Okay, and now we'll go back to the beginning and do the other side of our green. All right, I just wanna say that I just went over that red ink from the True Value and that covered right over the top of that. That is incredible. I think if I was choosing a base coating color, I think I would absolutely choose these paints for base coating. The finish is wonderful. The coverage is amazing. Really great. All right, for my base coat, we are going to use Sandstone, that's a great name for a color. We're using our polyfoam or these foam brushes for basing. They do a really great job, really even coverage. You can get really good thin coats with them. And so we just do light, thin coats, and it'll take me a couple of coats. Okay, one really cool trick that I learned a long time ago when you're gonna paint something that you don't know what the surface is underneath, if it's gonna be compatible with your paint, you do one coat and then you give it a scratch test. Just love lightly with your nails to see if the paint is gonna peel off. If it peels off, then you go for bigger guns as far as like what you have to use to prime with. So I am making the sandstone my mother color for this project um, for the art that I'm gonna put on here. So I'm gonna use it to mix into my other colors just to tone them down just a little bit. So I mix the moss and the sandstone 50-50. And now we are going to stencil our band on our project. So tea towel stripes have been the whiz bang trend of the of the last couple years they're everywhere and they're really classy and they're really cool um, i'm going to use this we have a tea towel stripe stencil so it has different ones you can make feed sack art with these as well i'm going to use this middle size and you can get these stencils on studior12.com when i tape i always tape in two places and then sometimes when we have um, this floppiness going on it's good to have something to prop up the end of the stencil so it doesn't flop and then pull the stencil off of your project. You could also cut them smaller, that works as well. So then that's there. Um, I am going to do the middle stripe in green. And so I'm gonna use these multi-maskers to mask. You could also use tape if you want to. And then we'll go here and wipe off, offload your paint. And then because I'm not wanting to swirl on a big open hole, because this is very long and big, I'm going to stipple so it doesn't move. And I'm not gonna go all the way to the end so it doesn't leave a strong line. Oops. Keep them still. Now what I think we'll do I think I'm gonna go ahead and tape because I am off the edge of this thing and I'm having a hard time controlling this side of my stencil. So I can do one, no problem, I can't do both. Okay, then we pick up our stencil and actually, I guess we should go ahead and dry this and do our stripes before we move. Okay, so next I'm going to mix red maple with the sandstone. That's turning that just a little bit pink, so I'm going to grab my orange and put some orange in it. So it's one sandstone, one red maple, and one orange. The good thing about having a limited palette is that 
you can just mix between your colors and it makes it actually really easy to um, to make a mother color and then change the palette all the way completely into a shading and highlight color. Okay, so now we'll mask and stipple. Okay, are we ready to take a look? Ta-da, how much easier do stripes get than that? That is fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna blow dry. So we've got our Farm Fresh from our other stencil. So make sure that you're using your um, eyeballs and looking for opportunities. I could use the pumpkins on a fall project. I could use locally grown with something else. I can use this Farm Fresh alone. Um, you can even just use fresh alone. So make sure you look around on your stencils and see what else you have. I'm gonna use that same green mix. And then from here, I'm gonna anchor that down and then I'm gonna go ahead and swirl. Here we go. Ta-da! Farm Fresh. Okay, and I do think that my Farm Fresh needs to have a little bit of a drop shadow. So I'm gonna get out my dark green. This is Deep Forest, and we're going to mix. I think we're just gonna mix a little bit of this into this green. I'll have to remix some of that green. Just don't want it quite that dark. Okay, and then what you do when you're gonna drop shadow with a stencil is you put on a dusting of your first color so you can see where it is, where it lives, and then you drop it down and over, up and over, however you wanna do it. You can drop shadow up, down, sideways, whichever side. So I tend to always default to my left side and drop down, and you wanna do it evenly. Okay, and then I need to tuck my stencil underneath the handles. And then we're gonna scumble. Once we load paint. Okay, then we take our stencil away. Oh, that's fun. I drop shadowed above and over. I think I might just leave that. That's very interesting. The debate was whether to leave it like this or not. Um, I kind of like the effect, but just to show you how to finish it out, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the other way. So now you lay your stencil, get it underneath these handles, right back on the green where you started, and then you load your brush and stipple. Okay, let's take a look. Ta-da! Okay, and that is how you drop shadow with a stencil. So the mushrooms come in a couple of sizes, and that's what's really cool about Studio R12 stencils is all, almost all of our stencils, um, after the first year that we made them, come in multiple sizes. So if this isn't the right size, you can look for a bigger size. And so we even got jumbo wumbo here, so we are gonna do the smaller size and we are going to make some mushrooms happen. Okay, I've got an inspiration piece here. Don't you love this? It is so cute. So I'm looking at colors. This is kind of where I pulled my palette from. So that's what you can do when you wanna choose colors. Um, I've got a yellow, I've got the green, and I've got this kind of corally color going on. So I'm gonna start and base with my light color. So in the case of the Coral, I'm gonna base in with my lighter color. This is going to be my um, highlight color, and this is apricot blush. Okay, so we're gonna go, I think I'll go with this guy and this guy in my apricot color. And 
And so what you'll do is you'll just base, and I've got my multi-masker. These are the handiest tools. You have to have them. Get two because you can use them on either side as long as you're not going over an edge. Okay, so there's the base for that. And then we'll go base there. All right, and then here's the fun. Okay, so we're going to use this mix that we used on the stripes, and we're gonna really, 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 a lot of reallys offload. And then we're going to do little swirls and shape following brushing. I cup the corner. And we're gonna stay out of that middle We'll do our other one. If you really, really dry it off, then it really helps you um, get a good blend. I think I want a little bit stronger over here. Okay, and then we'll get into a small brush and get out straight up red maple. And just tuck that in that corner to deepen. Um, we have all of these wonderful little um, detail stencils, and they can be connected with a little grommet. Just super handy to tuck into your paint tools caddy, <clears throat> and then you have anything that you need right there. So I like the detail on this. They've got all these cute little, um, little circles on there, so I'm going to add some of those to this. Let's see. Probably another small brush and just do a little odd selection of these. And maybe just a little bit of white. I like it. Then we will go into the stems, which are going to be, we've got this um, chestnut, so dirty brush in the white, they're chestnut. And so since the stems are the color that I want them, I'm just going to highlight the edges. Let's take a little peek. If we like that, come on together. I feel like it needs to go to the gray. All right, I have a mix of some black, the chestnut, and some white on my brush. I think I just mixed the chestnut. Okay, oh, that's a little grayer, that's better. And we'll do the underneath of this one. I 
Okay, and then for the shading underneath, I'm just going to go with the brown and the black. Okay, and now we go into some of the yellow. Okay, I'm going to mix just a little bit of this red in with our yellow. Maybe, maybe, I don't want to mix orange. And maybe we mix that chestnut in with it. Okay, and remember that we're basing with our um, lightest color so we can shade. So I'm going to take my yellow and I'm going to take white. And maybe we sneak in just a little bit of that chestnut. So we Take our light color and our multi-masker. The neat thing about the multi-masker is it has all of these little wavy lines and angles so that you can find one that fits the area you're about to stencil in. Okay, now I will wipe off my brush and try not to make a mess. Pick up that shadow color and just shade the sides. And then we'll pick up a little bit of that chestnut and ever so lightly give it some deepening. Okay, and we are ready to see how our mushrooms look. Dun, dun, dun. Look how cute they are. They're adorable. Okay, so I have worked ahead and I have made a mother color out of the sandstone and the um, deep forest green. And I made a softer green for the handle and then I made, I just gave myself some sandstone on there. Um, and then I made a darker, you can look on this palette right here. So this is the one I used for the handle. So it has more of the mother. And then this is the one that I used for the inside just to give it some depth. But when I did that, I feel like my bottom stripe isn't dark enough. So we're gonna go back. The neat thing about stencils being reusable is that you don't have to repoke if you're using a vinyl stencil. And so I can just lay this right back over on top and I can just deepen that green. No problemo. I like it. I think that anchors it way better. Okay, so now details on the handle. Um, you can take the stripe and go all the way around the piece if you want to, and you could put some different um, words from our stencil um, on the ends or a mushroom on the end would be really cute. So you could take this as far as you want to and it would be really fun. All right, so I think we're gonna try the bubbles. So I've got some plant stakes that I've done, and I'm gonna show you how to do these. Um, and these are done in the same color family as this, and I've used these bubbles on there. So we're going to back into the mother color, sandstone. We're gonna use our little bubble stencil. And I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of brush mix and maybe more, maybe more. Let's see if we can see, do one over the little hingy thing. Okay, I think that's a good color. So if you just swirl, just a neat little touch of color. Huh? And take it over the top. 
we'll continue around this side. Okay, so now let's talk about plant steaks. We are going to use our stencils for, we have vegetables and we have herbs. And I've already finished a couple of them. So we have, I think the vegetables have two stencils in a set and the herbs have one. And this all has these um, design elements so that you can decorate. And so we're going to choose spinach for this other green one. And so we take this word, and I'm gonna do it with a drop shadow, but the drop shadow is gonna be built in. Instead of me doing it three times, I'm gonna, um, I'm going to put it where I think I want the word, and then I'm gonna drop it down. And then when I do the white, I will drop it up, if that makes sense. And so we'll get the black on there. Let that dry. Okay, now we take the word, we line up the spinach, and then we drop it up and over. And we get out our white. Then we peel it up and ta-da! So much fun. Okay, we're gonna use the same stripe on this that we did with Project. And we'll use just a little bit of green in with our white. Cute, 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 cute. And now we add bubbles. And I'm gonna blow dry that stripe. Okay, and then we take our bubbles. Same brush, same color. We don't spend a whole lot of time on it. Just kind of a hazy bubble effect. And we are done. Now to finish this, you would go ahead and put either some finishing wax, min wax natural, you just wipe on all over it with the min wax. Um, we use a sponge. So it's just one of those little guys right there. You could also use a polyurethane back down here. I like to use these, um, these oval glaze brushes. And let me show you how that looks on a handle. So you're gonna make it nice and flat. And you'll just go ahead and give it two or three coats on the areas that you think are going to get beat up. Handles always get beat up, so you would do two or three coats inside and out. It dries really quick. And then, of course, you're going to do a coat on the box itself. Uh, two or three coats. And then go all the way around. I hope that you love this as much as I do. This was so much fun to do. Um, I hope that you check out the Deco Earth paints to reclaim all of that wasted paint and the coverage, as you saw in the video, was amazing. And then also do the hashtag, um, I've got it written down, create opportunity challenge from Goodwill. And then if you search that hashtag, then you'll be able to see other projects that people have done. And it is amazing, the creativity out there. So if you like the video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell, and we'll see you in the next video.